Hello, I'm Joe Silvera, and we're here at the Silvera Jewelry School in Berkeley, California with Beejucation to make a short video for you on torch safety, how to work with torches at home in your home studio. So we're going to be working with butane torches, specifically the Max Flame and the Micro Butane Torch. Now, if you have a different model, they all work fairly similarly, so you'll be able to do the same techniques that I show you with those torches. We're specifically going to look at how to set up to work safely at home, how to light the torch, how to refuel the torch, and how to work with the torch safely. Um, now, we're in Berkeley, California, so if you hear some little background noises, I hope they're not too distracting. It's just the sound of the city around us, and uh, I hope you enjoy the video. Let's get started. So whenever working with torches, it's important to protect yourself, to protect your eyes, to protect your clothing and your body when you're working with the flame, and to protect your hair. So the first thing, of course, is safety glasses. You want to protect your eyes. So I'm the first to admit that wearing safety glasses over regular glasses is very uncomfortable, and you probably won't do it. So if you wear glasses, do yourself a favor and go get prescription safety glasses for whatever craft you do. These are heavier duty, so they can take a hit just in case you get hit in the lenses. They have side shields, and you can tell your doctor that when you're wearing these, about how far away the work is so that they can tweak the prescription to make this more clear and easier to, uh, to work at. And that way, you have to wear less magnification. Now, once you've got your eyes protected, the next thing is your clothing. You want to make sure that you're wearing natural fibers, nothing synthetic. Anything hot hitting you will melt through synthetic stuff. So your apron, your clothing, anything you're wearing should be natural cotton kind of materials. And your hair. If you are blessed with hair, and I was at one time, <laughs> but you need to make sure that it's tied back and not just the stuff around the back, but the front too. So I don't have to worry about the bangs, but you need to clip them back if they're gonna hang into this area if you get too close, because they can sizzle up and burn, and nobody likes the smell of burning hair. Good, so once you're protected, then we can go on with the rest of the safety. So we're here to talk about torch safety, but it's also important to be safe with the environment that you're working with the torch in. So uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about making sure that it's safe all around you. So for one thing, hot stuff from here could fall onto your floor. And if you're working at home, that's something to think about. So to protect your carpeting, your tile, your hardwood, you wanna put something else down, like an office mat or a remnant carpet that you don't care about as much, it's going to be easier to protect. Okay. And you know, if you are able to work over a concrete floor, that's your safest option. Now, you want to have a fire extinguisher nearby. Uh, it doesn't have to be on the table, so you can have this off the table, but just somewhere handy where you can get to it. The height of your chair is also important for safety and for ergonomics. So sometimes people stand up to solder or they sit very high up, but that can be hard on your back. So just make sure you're at a lower height. I've lowered my chair down. It's an adjustable office chair so that I'm closer to chest height or even a little bit lower so that I don't have to scrunch or hunch over to see what I'm doing. When you're working with torches and some of the chemicals that go along with soldering, there's fumes that can happen. So you want to make sure that you don't set up in a confined space. So sometimes a walk-in closet is a nice room to convert for craft, but not necessarily for working with a torch. Make sure you're in a more open area, that you have maybe higher ceilings or you're working near a window that you can open. That's ideal. Or you've got a door you can open or a window fan. All those are going to increase ventilation and help with any slight fumes that might be coming off the work. So first thing we're going to do here is we're going to refuel the torches safely. Now, whenever you go to refuel the torch, you should make a few checks on the torch first, make sure it's ready to refuel and it's safe to do so. So when we look at this torch, um, we want to make sure that the flame is completely out, that you turned it off correctly and there isn't a lingering flame here, because putting in butane while there's a flame on that end would be very bad. Then on this side here, there's a gas dial and you want to make sure that the gas is turned completely to off. So off, if you can't quite see the numbers on here, off will be back towards the trigger. 
plus or on is towards the flame where the flame comes out. So all the way back to off. And then there's a safety switch under the trigger here. You want to make sure that that is on so it's impossible to turn on the trigger while you're fueling. Lastly, when you're using the torch, maybe you were just using the torch and now you need to refuel it, this part here gets very hot. So it could burn you. So make sure when you're holding the torch for refueling that this is pointed away from your wrist, not towards your wrist. This will burn you. So make sure that is away from you. Happy wrist, burnt wrist. Happy, burnt. So make sure that's pointed the right way. Torch is upside down. And you take the butane canister and you want to shake this up a little bit to get the fuel warmed up. Butane is really cold. So warm it up a little bit like that. Make sure you're using premium, good quality butane. Poor quality butane will clog your torch. The canister is upside down. The nozzle has to match the nipple there where the fuel is going to go in. Place that directly straight down on that little recessed nipple. And you're going to press down hard to get the flow of fuel going. Now, that's a good seal. If you're pressing too lightly or to the side, right away you're going to get a spritz out. But if you press down and hard, you can see there's only a light haze. Now, that big wet spray back indicates the torch is full. So, now we're done with that. We can set the canister down and away because you don't want this anywhere near the area where you're working with a hot flame, so make sure that's off the tabletop. And the torch goes upright and back into its stand to settle for maybe about five minutes to allow any air bubbles to work their way out so that you don't get a sputtering flame when you start. And the same refueling applies to the bigger max flame torch as well. It refuels exactly the same way. Now, I'm going to pull the safety switch down. I'm going to light the torch by pressing the trigger down hard to ignite it. Now I'm going to do something that's unsafe. Teachers always do something unsafe to show you something. So you can change hands. If you change hands, just make sure you keep the flame pointing the right way. But I'm going to turn the torch sideways just so you can see this button. So make sure that, you know, you don't necessarily do this as well. But just so you see the button work, I'm going to push the button down now. That's the locking button. Then let go of the trigger and then let go of the locking button to keep it on. So now the torch is locked on, and to turn it off, I just hit the trigger again, like that. And in fact, once you get that down, you can do that with one hand, like that, pretty easily. One more time to help you remember how to turn on the Max Flame torch. To pull the safety switch down so that the trigger is unlocked, Start with the gas switch back. It doesn't have to be on full. You can have it on a third up or halfway up. Depress the trigger to light it. Make sure you hear the popping sound. That's gonna be the igniter. Now, again, I'm gonna do something unsafe to show you how to work the locking switch for the camera. This is not necessarily how you would turn the torch in your studio. You'd keep it pointed towards the block. I'm gonna switch hands, keeping the flame pointed towards something safe. And I'm going to pull this switch back to lock on the trigger. So when I let go, the flame stays on now. To turn it off, the trigger doesn't work. So I have to push the locking switch off by pushing it forward. And that turns off the torch. Let's take a look at our work surface. So to make sure you don't scorch your tabletop, you need a buffer surface. So this isn't something that you work on directly with the flame, it's just something to protect the table from the heat that could go through the solder board or your brick. So make sure that uh, if you're, even if you're using a kiln brick or a solder board, that you've got this on top of something like a tile. Now this is just a simple inexpensive floor tile from the hardware store, it's like a dollar. You can have one or two of these so you increase your work area. You could also use a piece of tile backer board, you use that for tile projects around the house. It's made of concrete, uh, so it's pretty flame proof. You could also use a thin sheet of steel. All of those would be adequate for protecting your tabletop from an errant flame, you know, just kind of slipping off the board and to the side. All right. Now, when you set up to do your work, it's also good to set up so that you don't burn yourself. Um, we've got our tile down. Um, I'm a right-handed person. That means that my right hand is the dominant hand. I usually have my picks and tweezers and things like that on this side. 
And the torch is what I use in my left hand because it doesn't take a lot of dexterity to do this. So by making sure that the torch is on the left and everything I need to pick up with my dominant hand is on the right, I don't do any of this stuff where I accidentally cross over the work area where things can be hot and I could accidentally burn myself. Let's work with the flame now so that we can work with the flame safely. Um, what I'm going to show you is how adjusting this sleeve here on the torch, if your torch has this adjustment, this will change the nature of the flame. So it will make it from hot to cooler. And you want to make sure you have the right flame for soldering or fusing. And what I'm doing is just opening and closing a hole that's running through the nozzle. So you can see there it's wide open. That's halfway, and then it's fully closed. So the hole is usually in different positions. Sometimes it's here, side, top, wherever it is. If you're turning the sleeve, it's opening and closing the hole. So that's what I'm doing with my fingers as I show you the different flames. So I'm lighting the torch. There you can see the blue flame. This is called an oxidizing flame. It has the most oxygen. The hole is wide open. It's sharply delineated. It's got like a nice outline of a cone with a sharp tip and it's hottest right at the tip of the uh, of the cone right there. Now if I close this down a little bit you can hear the torch changes in sound or excuse me the flame is changing and the sound coming from the torch is changed. The tip has gone from pointed to feathered. So this is called a neutral flame. This is a typical flame for using for soldering because it's a little less oxidizing. It's a little cleaner and softer to work with than the oxidizing flame. It's still nice and hot right at the tip right there. If this is closed down completely, then you pretty much lose the outline of the cone. You get what's called a bushy or annealing flame. It's fainter harder to see the middle part of the flame in here and it's a little softer in heat so it doesn't heat up quite as quickly as the other two. So this would be a hard flame to use for most soldering on a butane torch. So you either want halfway open, excuse me, wide open, that's oxidizing, or halfway open like that, neutral flame, a nice focus so you see the cone back here and just a feather tip. So oxidizing wide open or neutral like that, halfway open but not completely shut down annealing, reducing flame like that. A or B. Good. Now, if we look at the flame, you see a really nice, obvious flame right here, this delineated cone on the oxidizing flame. And it's hot right in front of that tip right there. But if I move my pick back, you can see there's more flame than you can perceive with the naked eye. There's a lot of very faint flame out here that's still keeping this pick hot. And that's a few inches back from the tip that you can see. So it's important to know that there's still more flame than you can see like that. So the hottest part of it right here, still pretty hot right there. In fact, if I point this towards the charcoal and get a little hot spot going, I'm gonna start pulling the torch back nice and slow. And when I get back here about six to eight inches, I can still maintain a hot spot on the charcoal. Just under the red heat, this is called black heat, where you can't see it, but it's just under the surface. And it's still just as hot and hurts just as much. If you were to put your hand kind of over the charcoal but not touching the surface, you'd feel the radiant heat coming off of that surface. So you need to be careful about the residual heat coming off all these things you're working with. So you need to check carefully before you commit your fingers to something to make sure it's safe and cool where you're trying to grab it. Now, I want to show you something else about the torch too. And this really helps your soldering. So if you're trying to heat something up quickly, you want to be very close to the tip of the flame. And if we zoom in a little bit here, I want to show you something. Because students tend to feel that the, to get something hotter, they should get closer to the work. So they push in like this. And you might not be able to see it on the camera, but I can see with my naked eye that I get a little black spot where the air is blowing. So it actually cools things off a little bit. Plus, you're bringing the tip of the torch very close to a hot surface. So ideally, you should be right at the tip of the flame, tip of the cone, inside the flame, for the hottest surface, the hottest heat on the piece you're working with. If you need to be cooler, you pull back a little bit, and you can lower that temperature down by just being a little bit further back. 
you can move slowly like this to keep something hot, but if you move too quickly, you can see the heat disappear. So a lot of students, when they start, they move the torch too fast and they wonder why they can't solder. It's because you're not giving the heat time to dwell, time to build on the piece like this. If you're trying to put solder on and you're holding the heat on something the whole time like this, you're burning your piece. So you need to be simmering. Usually when you're trying to put solder onto something, you're trying to simmer back and forth like that to make sure that you're keeping a lower temperature. And that's how you can work safely with the flame and solder or fuse more effectively. Sometimes when you use the torch, you need to bring the torch so that the flame is horizontal, parallel to the work table. So now we've taken it away from the safe work area and we've brought it up and pointing out towards other stuff. So it's important to keep in mind how far out that flame reaches. So not only do you need to keep this area clear of paper and plastic that could melt, you know, if it, if it gets uh, in the way of the flame, but now when you're pointing out this way, you need to make sure that this area is safe too. Um, this is where you might accidentally burn a hole in your water bottle if it was sitting here or like melt the edge of your flux cup um, because it's in the path of the flame. So make sure that area is clear because when you're making something like a head pin and you're trying to uh, melt a little ball on the end of the wire, you're in this position. So the flame is reaching out that way. One thing that you can do um, is you could take a fire brick, something bigger than this, and you could place it out there raised up, especially a nice big kiln brick, and use that to block the heat so it doesn't go any further and protects everything to the back of that. Sometimes, for whatever reason, your torch isn't working. You try, but you can't get it to light. And so let's talk a little bit about some troubleshooting that you can try. One, make sure that you've turned the gas all the way up. Maybe you left it all the way down after you refueled it and it's not getting enough butane to light. So make sure that gas is all the way up. Two, maybe it's not getting enough oxygen. Maybe you've got this closed off and you need to open it all the way. The more open this oxygen sleeve is here, the more oxygen it'll have when you try to spark it and it can make it easier to light. Another thing that could happen is that you're not actually getting a little spark here on the end. This little wire coming up out of the end has a little copper showing and that's where the spark ignites the flame coming out of here. So obviously you can't uh, look at that while you're lighting it. So you have to have it off at a little bit of an angle and watch for a spark to see if it'll light. Like this one is lighting because the spark is, is hitting it. So now if that's not happening, if you're not seeing a little spark here, then your igniter could be broken. So if your igniter is broken, then you could use an alternative tool to light it. So this is called a sparker. You can get this at a hardware store or from a jewelry supply. And you can adjust the tension on it by pulling the little flint back like that and putting it back in. That gives you a little bit more tension so that when you just rub it down, it makes a spark. Now if you just start a stream, so I'm gonna pull in my safe surface to work here. If you just start the butane going and cup the butane for 20 seconds, and in light, you can see it light. Let's try that again. So you light, you got the butane going, and the spark lights it. So the torch still works, just the igniter on the torch doesn't work, and you just have to light it in another way. Another reason why the torch might not work could be the quality of the butane. So if you've got bad butane in here, maybe it gummed up and dirtied up the torch. So if it looks pretty bad in there, it could be bad quality butane. You could try taking a Q-tip and trying to clean out some of that stuff, maybe with a little bit of alcohol on there and make sure you let that completely evaporate before you try to light the torch. You can clean out some of that gunk and try it again. Also, you could run the torch until you vent out all the butane and refill it with a new premium quality butane. To vent out the torch, if, um, if it's not lighting, you can just lock it on and let it run for 20 minutes outside in a safe place. If it did light, what you could do is blow that out and then let that run until it stops. After it's completely 
stopped hissing, you don't hear butane coming out, try it again, make sure that you still aren't getting a flame, that it's completely vented out, and then try your new fuel, uh, a new refueling from the start. Now there's one other thing that I've seen on torches that can stop them from working, and it's usually on the max flame torch. So on the max flame torch, on the inside here, is a brass ring. And I've noticed that when these get dropped, sometimes this little brass ring will fall out. I don't know if I can pick this one out. Nope, looks like it's stuck in there nice. But if you don't see that inside there, your torch isn't going to light because that chokes down the flame so that it'll light. So if that's missing, look around, maybe you'll spot it on the floor. You can actually just put that back in with tweezers, just shove it back in and push it in tightly and your torch will work again. So hopefully these tips will help you uh, find long, useful life for your butane torches. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video. And with a little common sense and following those safety rules, you can solder and work with torches safely at home. Remember, don't keep butane on the table while you're working with a torch and have a fire extinguisher somewhere nearby, just in case. Thanks for watching the video and we hope to see you soon in another video here at Beeducation.com.